uh, specifically SCSI emulation and uh, uh, reducing uh, stress in the use of uh, computers, I suppose. Um, uh, I got into SCSI as a user, as a customer, eight plus years ago, um, seven maybe. Uh, I wanted a couple for some machines. I couldn't find any. Um, at that time, the devices that uh, were available were being hand assembled and in very small quantities and therefore they were always out. Nobody had them in stock. There was one guy making them in a literal toaster oven and uh, they were not um, not easy to get a hold of and they came from Australia too which make that just made things even more slow and laborious. Um, so the guy that designed the original SCSI SD's name is Michael McMaster. And um, I personally, and everyone who uses the SCSI SD today, or a Zulu SCSI, owe him a huge debt of gratitude because he is responsible for implementing a fully functional SCSI 2 command handling set that is completely open source. As far as I know, that is the first uh, time that, that, that that's been done. Um, he'd been working on it for a solid decade now, and um, uh, you know, there are my new product, Zulu SCSI, is built solidly atop the shoulders of that work and could not exist in a, any, any recognizable form without that effort. Uh, so I want to recognize Michael because, um, you know, it's a selfless thing to do to write open source code, um, especially when you have to debug it slowly over a decade. Um, and um, one of the fun things about SCSI is there are so many different uh, interpretations of the specification. So um, it, it evolved over a very long period of time, a um, couple of decades really, and became something that, um, you know, at a certain point in time you could find in everything from computers to uh, music samplers to synthesizers and industrial equipment and all over the place. So um, SCSI hard drives are great and all, but they can be really loud, they have a tendency of crapping out, and um, they're not fun to replace, and often the replacements don't work properly either because they're secondhand. So uh, as the weakest link in a lot of older computer systems, it is an obvious uh, thing that you might want to replace, uh, especially if um, your time has a lot of value. Um, if you're doing this in a hobbyist context and, and you're, you're fine puttering around with it, um, you know, you might have, you might enjoy uh, going through a pile of old hard drives. I've certainly done that myself plenty of times, um, but uh, it, it's not necessarily the most constructive way to spend your time. So, um, uh, fast forward to uh, a, a time, a point in time where microcontrollers got inexpensive enough and fast enough that you could implement the what looked like a SCSI hard drive in a chip that cost $10 or less. Uh, at the time, in the beginning, it was about $10. Um, that original implementation was the SCSI SDV5. This is an evolved version of it. Um, and this is based on a, a chip manufactured by Cypress Semiconductor um, that has been available for about 10 years now um, called the Programmable System on Chip. Um, it is a subject of the component availability uh, woes of the 21st century and uh, you cannot buy it from anyone and I don't know when you'll be able to. Um, the lack of availability of this chip is actually what drew, drove me to decide that we needed a, I needed a different solution. Um, we also have SCSI DV6 which is a high performance version um, and it is unfortunately subject to uh, a number of component shortages uh, which gate our ability to manufacture more of them. Um, and the, the big, the, it's a problem on two fronts with the V6. We don't, we can't get the FPGAs and we can't get the microcontrollers. Um, and you don't have a product if you can't get those two things. So um, I recognized, I had, I had done a bunch of things business-wise to stockpile parts and just try to, you know, uh, limit the impact it was going to have to our ability to produce boards. But I knew that, um, you know, that was only going to get me so far. And uh, in the end, in about 
November, October, November last year, but roughly a year ago, um, I saw the handwriting on the wall said, I'm not going to be able to get more of these. The factory hasn't shipped me what I ordered a year ago. Um, and I decided to spend a bunch of money and embark on um, an evolution of SCSI SD. Um, and SCSI SD is, uh, uh, for a long time, for many years, was basically the only affordable solution for um, s solid state SCSI storage emulation. Um, in the years since its creation, a few other things have popped up. Um, there was, there was, uh, there is a uh, RA SCSI, R -A SCSI uh, which is a, um, a hardware interface that allows you to take a Raspberry Pi single board computer and um, and a a attach it to a SCSI um, bus and make it emulate multiple storage devices. Um, unfortunately, in 2022 and beyond, um, sh with the shortages of components necessary to build more Raspberry Pis, that has become a less desirable option simply because you can't get the parts to do anything to, to build what you need. You can build, you can buy yourself a Ros uh, Roscosy board, but if, unless you have a Raspberry Pi, you can plug into the top of it. It's not much use. Um, it is a great solution, though, and it's very, very flexible. Um, and uh, you know. It, have a Raspberry Pi or in a drawer, then it's a, it's a possibly a very good option for you. Um, you. There are remote web controls for it. You can you can do all kinds of stuff remotely over a web interface, um, and uh, it's it's a very useful tool as long as you're okay with the fact that it's not instant on, because the Raspberry Pi has to, to boot Linux first before it will function as a storage emulator. Um, so uh, there's also, um, in the last uh, year, year and a half, uh, uh, another uh, SCSI emulation project called Blue SCSI, which was built. Uh, Blue SCSI is a project that was built on the shoulders of um, a project called Ards Casino. It's uh, a little bit hard to say, but if you write it down, it makes a little bit more sense. It's an Arduino-based uh, SCSI emulator built on a very low-end um, STM32 microcontroller very low pin count, very inexpensive to buy historically. Um, and there are these uh, 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 AliExpress special um, so-called blue pill boards, which are very small dip form factor boards that you can assemble using you know, readily available uh, through hole components into a design that has a SCSI connector on it and allows you to um, use it to uh, emulate SCSI one devices. Um, I liked a lot of the ideas that Blue SCSI had uh, 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 implemented, and Raw SCSI also was using some of them as well. And I chose to um, uh, embark on a design that fused some of those ideas together, fused some of the technological advancements of the SCSI implementation itself with SCSI SD, um, with a more readily configurable system that did not require a GUI configuration utility and a computer, a desktop computer of some sort. Um, with SCSI SD, you had you wanted to change the parameters about what you were uh, what you were exposing via SCSI. You have to take the board, take take it to a computer, plug it in via USB, read the config if there was already one there, change a bunch of settings in a GUI, and then save it and write it back out, and it saves it into the internal flash on the board. That's great and all, but it was a relatively slow, kind of cumbersome process that a lot of people found obnoxious, frankly. Um, and so it, when, Zulu, when we decided to develop a new uh, uh, hardware SCSI emulator based on existing open source technology, um, we, we, we had two problems. One was we, we had to choose a part that we could actually buy in volume, um, a semiconductor, a microcontroller that was available in 2022. Almost all STM32 chips are not obtainable right now at any price. No distributor has them, and there's no real estimate on when that situation is going to resolve itself, uh, if ever. So um, I had become aware of, uh, of a company that was based in China that makes a clone of the STM32 processors, of a very significant line of pro microprocessors that are re-implementations of those ARM microcontrollers. And uh, that company had um, uh, not had, it hadn't been terribly easy to get their parts in the United States. That's changing now, uh, especially because when, there, when there's no alternative, it looks really attractive. <laughs> but um, 
but, but now uh, we have our uh, current version of Zulu SCSI, which you can see on uh, our website at zuluscsi.com, that's Z-U-L-U-S-C-S-I.com, is based on um, a chip that actually is the same microcontroller that we used in the SCSI Desk DV6, but with no hardware fr uh, FPGA. So no hardware acceleration, everything's done in software. Um, and it performance-wise is about, it's a, I would say, an order of magnitude or two faster than the original SCSI Disk 5. It's not as fast as V6, but it gives it a big run for its money. And at, at half the price, that's uh, something to be notable. Um, so uh, we've now sold uh, over 1,000 Zulu SCSI boards. And we only started selling them uh, in uh, about April, April, May time frame of, last, of this year. Um, and so uh, th the future is bright because there's clearly a lot of interest in faster, um, readily available, fully assembled storage solutions that you can bu just buy and plug in as if you had a hard drive. Um, you know, Zulu SCSI itself uh, is just leverages a bunch of very common technologies, SD cards, um, fat file systems, um, uh, uh, all kinds of image-based ideas that were evolved. Um, you can take a raw hard drive image, you can dump a hard drive, byte for byte, write it to a file, you can take that file, put it on a raw SCSI, a blue SCSI, or a Zulu SCSI, and boot it as if it were a hard drive. The machine has no idea it's talking to something that is in emulation, right? So, uh, to say that has a lot of industrial and, and, and enthusiast uses. In the Amiga context, since Commodore shipped the Amiga 3000 and 3000T with an integrated SCSI controller, on any of those machines, you can just drop one of these in and make use of it in a matter of 30 minutes or less. Um, they're relatively expensive. Uh, the, the old boards from us cost in the range of 50 to $65. Um, a little bit more if you want a bundled SD cards and things like that, but all of that stuff's optional. We now are at a point where we've created on the Zulu SCSI design, and we have a successor that is based around a semiconductor that uh, w is extremely available in 2022. There are very few of those, <laughs> and this is one. The, the Raspberry Pi Foundation, the people who make the Raspberry Pi computer, um, Early in early last year, in January of 2021, released a design of uh, a new microcontroller, which they call the RP2040, um, and it is a Cortex M0 Plus microcontroller with some special hardware capabilities um, uh, that they refer to as PIO for pro programmable I/O blocks. It has two of them. We're using one in this new version of Zulu SCSI to speak STIO to the SD card at high speed, and we're using the other to speak SCSI. And uh, this board is uh, very, very affordable to manufacture. There's no shortage of the main microcontroller, and um, you can fit a whole ton of them on a reel, which matters from a manufacturability perspective for me. Um, so we just started selling these a month ago. Um, it, performance-wise, is basically at least one-to-one -one with the original version of Zulu SCSI. Um, but it has some tricks up its sleeve. It supports synchronous SCSI, which the Zulu SCSI does as well, um, which enables you to go up to five megabytes per second and even higher um, in throughput. Um, but it also has the ability to, on reads, give about nine, nine and a half megabytes a second in a best case scenario. That is, of course, assuming you're using it with a fast enough, modern enough SCSI controller. Um, and there's a huge amount of variance in terms of what SCSI controllers are capable of delivering throughput-wise. Um, so when someone asks me, uh, you know, how fast, can it, how fast is it, uh, my response is always, well, where, how are you going to use it? What's, what's your use case? Because if I know that, I can usually give somebody a little bit of a more, I can make a more educated guess about, um, you know, what kind of performance they might expect to get out of it. Um, in the case of uh, your Amiga, on Amiga 3000, for instance, generally you're going to be capped at around three, three and a half megabytes a second with the built-in controller. Um, that was considered fast 
when it was a new machine. And most hard drives were not that fast. Um, and, uh, you know, I in a lot of classic Mac Macintosh machines that Apple sold, the hard drives that they bundled with those machines that were 40 and 80 megabytes in size couldn't even deliver a megabyte a second. They were like 700, 500K per second, relatively slow by modern standards. But it was good enough back then. Um, so speed is relative. That's, I think, one thing uh, a lot of people don't necessarily recognize is, um, is it fast? Well, is it fast relative to what? With, st with solid state storage, you have basically no seek time, no access time. Um, and with rotational hard drives, that's highly variable, depending on where it is on the disk that you're fetching data from, um, and all sorts of other factors that we won't bother to get into. Um, so uh, the wife acceptance factor is also high. Uh, plenty of failing and failed hard drives that uh, emit extremely painful noises um, when they uh, start to die. Often, they won't spin up at all. But sometimes they do something in between where they'll spin up halfway, spin down, spin up, spin down. And um, uh, if, if your wife is anywhere near, if your spouse is anywhere near or partner, anywhere near it, they might shut you down pretty quickly. Uh, I've certainly had that happen to me. Um, so in, in closing, if you have any type of old computer that has a SCSI storage interface on it and you have a failed hard drive, it behooves you to look at the options that are out there that are solid state and are easy replacements because um, you know you can certainly buy a secondhand hard drive for less than the cost of a SCSI SD or a Zulu SCSI but if it dies on you the second but the second thing you'd have to buy to replace it you're at parity with the cost if not less um, so the total cost of ownership, if you will, of a modern SCSI emulator ends up being less. It makes it really easy to use very large SD cards. You know, th th this will work with 200 gigabyte SD cards. Um, there's no real limit on the upper, uh, upper size of capacity. It, it boils down to what the operating systems are capable of, of supporting. And that goes back to the presentation that was just being given about some of the limitations uh, you know, with, with Commodore's uh, uh, SCSI controllers where in an era where four gigabytes was a lot of storage. Um, but yeah, uh, I hope to be producing these for the foreseeable future. As long as we can buy the parts, we're going to make them. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I, I think that for a lot of people, SCSI sounds like a lot, uh, made, made to be out of a kind of voodoo magic that it isn't. Um, and it can certainly uh, be difficult to wrap your head around if it's a new technology to you. But um, for most people who have had at least a little bit of experience with it, if you start to do anything with SCSI, um, you recognize pretty quickly that uh, some of the old memories will come back to you and that this is a much easier way to go about using uh, storage. One other thing I forgot to mention is these devices can emulate all seven SCSI devices on one piece of hardware. So you can pretend you have seven different hard drives or seven, six hard drives and a CD-ROM drive or seven different CD-ROM drives. Um, how you choose to expose that is entirely up to you and it's fairly easy to configure based on file names. Um, so uh, a huge amount of flexibility that you get out of uh, a removable um, device. These also support hot swap. So if you're not, you, if you're not booting from it, you can actually stop the timer here. If you're not booting from it and your operating system supports it, you can unmount the file system, pull the card while it's hot. That's, that's an absolutely supported thing to do. Shuffle some, you know, sneaker net some files off and put the card back in and read off whatever you put on the card. So there's a lot of flexibility there. There are a lot of solutions out there uh, that cover the price spectrum in terms of um, storage emulation. There are lots of older solutions out there that have become unavailable over the last few years because they're based on designs for hardware that you can't get anymore. Um, and when we design our boards, we make sure that we, we can continue to manufacture them with parts that are currently available new. That's really important to us because, you know, Zoo, SCSI SD V5 is based on a chip that is 10 years old. That chip is now kind of hard to get, impossible to get. Um, but I hope this one lasts another 10. And, and it'll really enable your computer or, uh, you know, telephone switch 
uh, to continue to function to the uh, second decade uh, and maybe the third of the 27th, 21st century. So thank you for your time.